Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another edition of Mini Bites. This is week two, part two of our series, Grace, going through Romans chapters five through seven. Today, we're going to talk about law versus grace and how they interact with each other. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Romans chapter five. We're going to read verses 12 to the end of the chapter, which is verse 21. Let's dig right in. Romans 5, starting with verse 12. It says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. In part one, we talked about Adam versus Jesus as our two federal headships. And so uh, if you missed that part, you can go back and listen to it. Verse 13, for before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of those to come. What this basically means is even though there wasn't a formal law because the law had not been given to Moses yet on Mount Sinai, there was still the law of God. There was still commands, just as uh, a law was given to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Uh, do not touch, do not eat. And um, so there was still sin. There was sin between Adam and Moses. There was still law being broken, even though it wasn't the law. Verse 15, but the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigns through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Verse 18, consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Verse 20. The law was added so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So to start the proceedings, uh, I want to talk about the, the pattern of redemptive history in Scripture. So first of all, we have the promise. And we had been talking about this in our previous uh, series going through the book of Romans uh, when we talked about Abraham. Abraham received the promise. The, the promise was that, that he would uh, be the father of many nations. And and this promise was not just that he would have uh, great, great wealth because of having all of these generations. The promise ultimately was that one of his, that, that, that ultimately the, the generations that would come after him would be the Messiah. That Jesus would come and save his sins his sins, as well as all of his descendants' sins. This was the promise that was spoken to Abraham. And so the promise was the gospel proclaimed to Abraham ahead of time, and he believed, 
and was justified by faith and faith alone. So first came the promise. Then pattern of redemptive history and scripture comes the law. The law was given to Moses on Mount Sinai and the law um, had, had all of these rules and regulations, but ultimately the law showed man what sin was. Then after the law, then came grace. And so here we have this pattern from Old Testament to New Testament of promise, law, and grace. So let's take these, each one. The promise was a covenant. It was the inheritance. It was what God will do. And it was not based on whether you perform or not. And this was 430 years before the law was given. The promise was given. In fact, even before the promise was given, the promise was given. Uh, if you go back to Genesis chapter 3, when the original fall happened, the first proclamation of the gospel happened, and that was the, the, uh, the telling of the Messiah, that Jesus would come. So the promise was even before the promise. Then we have the law. The law exposes sinfulness and transgression, and it reveals God's wrath and consequences because of sinfulness and transgression. And we're going to find out in this series, Grace, um, in, in a few weeks, that the law entices humanity to sin more. But it's not the law's fault. It's certainly not God's fault because God does not tempt. We know that. God does not sin. Therefore, he does not tempt. But the law, because of our broken humanity, because of our sinfulness, the law will actually entice humanity to, to sin more. Then comes wonderful, glorious grace. Getting what we don't deserve, or it could also be said, not getting what we do deserve. Getting what we don't deserve is eternal life. Not getting what we do deserve, we do deserve eternal damnation. And this is solely God's work. It is not by works lest any man boast. This is grace. So this is the redemptive history. Now, we, I just showed you a linear graph, basically. Uh, it was the promise, then uh, the law, and then grace, because this is how the human mind understands it. But in actuality, uh, even though we have human history that has different dates, certainly. Grace has always been. But we can also see where when Jesus came was really when grace came. But Jesus, Scripture says, was crucified since the foundation of the world. So there has always been grace. And Jesus was always going to be crucified. Again, going back to the promise, that is what the promise was all about. That is what he was promised. That's what he believed in and was justified by faith. So now let's go back to verse 20. It says, The law was added so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, law increased all the more. So let's talk about the law for a minute. The law was added. That means it wasn't a primary or essential feature of God's divine plan. The law wasn't a part of God's plan. Jesus' crucifixion was. But sin wasn't a part of his plan. Sin entered in, and therefore the law had to be added. The Apostle Paul, who wrote the book of Romans, also wrote to the Galatians, and he said this in 319, why then was the law given at all? It was added, he also said it was added, just as he says to the Romans, it was added because of transgressions, just as he states to the Romans, because of transgressions until the seed, Jesus, to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels, given from angels to Moses, 
and entrusted to a mediator who was Moses. He mediated for the people. He was, it was a, a holding. It was, it was uh, something that held over until Jesus would come. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. It was a foreshadow of what Jesus was. Jesus reveals what the Father is and what the Father expects. And that's what the law is and what the law does, is it reveals what God expects. So the law, it says, that there would be an awareness of sin. The law was added so that there would be an awareness of of sin. The law was added so that trespass might increase. That doesn't mean the law came so that people would sin more. It means that there would be more of an awareness of sin, that, that people would understand that there's more sin, that, that, oh my goodness, I'm sinning, that there would be more of an awareness of sin. That's what that means. That there would be a knowledge of the true nature of our transgression, that sin might be seen in our lives and that it would be seen as exceedingly sinful. Before the law was given, we didn't quite understand what God expected and why it was so wrong to do the things that we do. That's why the law is important. And that's why Jesus came to fulfill the law and why he lived a sinless life and why he didn't break the law is so that he could show us what God expects and how holy God is. Now, this last phrase in verse 20, but where sin increased, again, where sin increased, meaning there was an awareness of sin, grace increased all the more. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more, or, or grace became more abundant. What does this mean? We could rephrase it in this way to make it more understandable to us. The increased revelation of sinfulness to us because of the law. Remember, the law is not wrong. The law is not evil. The law is not bad. The law was from God. Therefore, it's good. It's holy. It's from God. The increased revelation of sinfulness to man because of the law, of the race given through the law, gave grace an opportunity to demonstrate itself as much greater than sin. In other words, that sin, or that, that grace rather, has an opportunity to overtake and overcome our sinfulness. What the law does is this. Have you ever gone into a dark room before and opened up the shades or opened up the curtains and let sunlight in? And what you notice is how dusty it is, or you can even see the dust particles in the air. You didn't notice before how dusty or dirty or maybe even filthy it is in the room until you let light in. That's what the law does. And so the law increases the revelation or, or the sight or the knowledge or the understanding to us of our sinfulness. And then with that understanding, with that increased sinfulness in our life, but it's the understanding of it, then we understand how much we need Jesus. And therefore, grace abounds because Jesus abounds. We understand how great Jesus is and how great his grace is for us and how we can't, there, there's nothing that we've ever done that would, would overspend or, or out, out distance ourselves from his love and from his grace, that his love, his grace covers our multitude of sins, that grace is much greater than our sin that has been exposed by law. And so that is how 
law and grace should and does coexist with each other. 